To the ecamm live demo today we're going to be walking through how to use ecamm live it's real easy so follow along uh if you really want to get up to speed the best thing to do is grab your computer and that way you can cruise with us cruising on a friday afternoon but it's actually morning to me <laughs> all right we're gonna go into live demo mode and no i do not wish to install system audio so shut up all right cool uh my interface allows me to bring in my audio from other apps through the interface so I don't need system audio. If you have an interface that doesn't have a built-in loopback feature, as we call it, then you will probably need to install system audio if you need sound from a browser or, you know, Apple Music or something else to pass through Ecamm. So that's why I don't need that, just, just so don't confuse anyone. So it's the Ecamm interface. I purposely hide all the windows so that you guys don't freak out. When you first install the app, all the windows come open, and then people, they say, oh, I can't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? No, I can't even think of what it is. I can't, I can't handle it. There's too many windows. Then close them. It's so simple. Like, you know, if you, if you can't handle that much windows, close them. Uh, cause you don't need all of them. You kind of need a couple primary ones, which you'll see as we process through this process. Wow. That was, that was unique doc. That was super unique. Okay. So we're going to start out with a quick reminder that you have the ability in Ecamm to make profiles and those are found in the very top of this window here. And in the profile window, at the top here, you can select what type of profile you're using. You might have none, so go ahead and create one brand new. This is gonna be, I do every different profile for me as a different show, right? And then according to whichever shows I need to create, those are the profiles that I use. So this is the Ecamm demo profile, and that's sort of like your overarching house, right? So if each program is a show, each show is a spot in your, you know, your real estate portfolio, this particular show, the live demo show. So that's the portfolio that I have selected. Now inside there, you're going to have this house. This house is going to have several rooms. So for that, we go to window here, open up scenes, boom. So in this scene right here, I had the, then there's this particular scene where ignore this for a second. Cause I'll explain it later. And then, okay. So those are, those are my various scenes. Now, the, the main thing to understand, folks, is people get confused between scenes and overlays. And you shan't. Because just think of a scene as a room and the overlay as the furniture in that room. 
Can you have a room with no furniture in it? Absolutely. Press this button, turn on the camera. Done. That's it. That's all you need, right? But if you want to look swanky, then you're going to want to start out with like an area rug. So here's an empty room with no furniture in it. And then now we're going to go get ourselves a fancy area rug because, you know, we want to look cute. So we grab this JPEG here. There it is. There's my area rug. It's in there. Do not open that. <laughs> uh, okay. So there's my area rug. And if I don't like that particular rug, I can get a different one. Right? You know what I mean? You can put in here whatever you like. It's your world, just a squirrel trying to get a nut. Right? Whatever you want. Now, see, when I get to this portion of the demo, what people say is, oh, wow, pretty gradient. Where did you get such a gradient from? And I say, G O O G L E dot com. Cute gradients, purple gradients, pink gradients, orange gradients, whatever. Anyway, my choice, my spot of choice is a place known as Gradient Hunt. Okay, so first I'm gonna open up this overlays tab because overlay is like our furniture layout situation. I'm gonna delete all of these gradients that we have here, pop this on, just paste this in. This is just where I go. There's thousands, I mean, literally thousands of utility places where you can go and find yourself super fancy fied gradients that will pop your socks. Um, you don't even have to use this one, okay? It is completely up to you. But uh, yeah, there's no secret repository of dope gradients that only like special people know. You literally go to Google and you Google, I need this kind of gradient. Now, you'll notice what I just did covered up the, the word, the words here. But if I am big in this to the full scale, it's covering up the words. So what I want you to notice is that in here, we have a hierarchy, and I have the gradient sitting on top. I want the gradient on the bottom. Then that fixes our hierarchical problem, and then now our words is like this. Now, what you're going to find out is if I go back to here, it's still black back there, right? Well, because I, I did my gradient in sort of a weird situation. So if we go back to the, this scene here, you'll notice that when I was in this area, it says show in current scene, right? It lists it show in current scene. Right here, it says show in background. If I take this gradient, move it to show in background, now we're cooking with Pam, right? So now, if I were to switch back to this other situation here and remove the camera, it's there. You know, the background stays with us, all right? Everybody following along? Cool. All right, let's get into the next thing. So for this particular set up um this gradient situation is kind of fine now i have this bug down here in the bottom i'm going to turn that off for now because i don't want you guys to be like hey how'd you do that because i want you to stay focused <laughs> oh this guy rich oh my god this guy rich here let me turn this on real quick so i can <laughs> searching dope gradients will get you flagged by the dea <laughs> Uh, there you go. All right. So anyway, just look wherever you want. You don't have to be a gradient. Like, listen, it could be anything you like. If you want to have a highly twirling, spinning background of some sort, you can easily find that too. Um, so let, I'm going to log into my secret scroll, get in spot. I use a a, a service called Artlist. And Artlist has a couple gajillion um, backgrounds. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know why this is not working. Let me log in again. Bum, bum, bum. There we go. All right, so let me make it so that you guys can see. On this particular new scene, we're going to 86 this. And we're going to change this to let's 
So just in case you want to see, I'm going to grab a screen share overlay, right? One of the types of furniture you can put in is what is something known as a screen share. So if I pop that guy in there, click on the old pencil, change it to Chrome A, and then bam, there's my art list situation, right? So let's just say in here, I'm going to do a uh, background, B-A-C-K-G-R-O-U-N-D, pow. And then wait for it to load. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Let's pick something Boca-licious. Ooh, this one is kind of freaky. Probably a little too busy. I don't like moving backgrounds in general, just me. But if you are going to pick one, pick something that's not, like, too crazy, right? Because it becomes a little bit distracting for your audience. You want it to be a little bit subtle. I like these, you know, really cool kind of barely moving Bocalicious background. So we're going to take this, take the HD version. It's the smallest version on there. I'm downloading real fast. It's coming. Boom, it's in there like swimwear. I'm going to just pick this up and drop it in the ECAM. So one of the situations you notice inside this overlay window, we have animated overlay, right? So you can press this, and then you have to hunt down your folders and get it. Or if you already know where it is, you just drag it, drop it in, Notice in this particular situation, I'm going to be super cognizant of putting it in the show and background area. Okay. And so now it's there. So now it's there. We'll temporarily hide this. And yeah, that's it. That's all you need to do. And so now I have my background. I can add myself a camera. So if I come in here to my camera overlays, you'll see there's a new group called new camera overlays. We just pop that in. And there's my camera, right? So now we're building the whole scene. I'm going to change the shape of this camera to a squircle because that's the shape that I like. And I'm going to place it about right here, pull it out about X, Y, Z amount, and then pull it back to where it bites the center. All right, fantastic. On this particular scene, I'm going to add a guest participant. So I'm going to hold the option key and pull this over until I get the blue line. Let me know that I'm even Steven. Boom. Game recognized game. So this is where my guess is going to be. All right. So let me out of the way. Now what we're going to do, looking at our furniture store, we're going to grab a new text overlay. Pop. All right. Let's just say who shall be my guest today. I've been through a bunch of different ch 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 changes remain the same to to change yes sorry i have <laughs> i have uh, uh musical Tourette's. it just comes out uh you know what i mean it's just one of those weird things that i do all right so let's go and see i'll stick to my ted lasso one it's easy so what we want to do is i'll do mine first now i will highly suggest when you're doing this you pick the person that has the longest names first, but I kind of know my font sizes by, you know, just knowing them. So I don't really have to go through all of those changes. It says right here on the bottom that if you want to add a new line, hold down the shift key while pressing the return key. And even with the instructions printed right in the dialog box, we get asked that question like once a week. I'm like, it, the instructions is like right here. I really don't know. I don't know. You guys got to help me. Woo. All right. Then I'm going to hit a pipe. Not that kind, Rich. <laughs> All right. Coolio with the flow. So what I like to do, this is just me. I like to take whatever my initial font size is. I like to take my subtext and bring it down by it that amount one size right 36 goes down to 24 right 24 goes down to 18 because you know they're they're all relative and you'll notice that it, get, it gets different you know at different sizes right it's not exactly the same calculation but it is as far as fonts go so don't get caught up in that just pick one step down another thing that i like to do personally is i like to take this guy and make it like a demi Take this guy and make it a heavy. Ooh, that was a lot. All right, let me take this Demi back. 
I'll make that a medium, and then I'll take these guys, la, 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 and I'll put them on, like, light, right? And just to put that back to regular. There you go. All right, that just, it just gives it a little something. It's up to you. You can do whatever you want. You can even come in here and select just that particular portion and give it a little sauce, you know, like uh, pick a color. Bam. Now we got sauce on that one particular section. You see what I mean? That just adds a little flavonoids, right? I'll also take this one and give it a little flavonoids. All right, cool. We're in there like swimwear. Boom. I hit that. Hit those switches on the next block. Now, what I like to do is pin that to the corner and then go to about 75% and then back out to about 90%. This is just me. You do whatever you want, right? I'm just showing you how I do it. All right, so I'm going to leave those with a little bitty overhang like such. And then for my guests, I'm just going to pull this over here and then pop. Pop it like it's hot, all right? In this particular case, I, this is a weird bug. It only happens to me, even with the latest beta. I don't know why. It's kind of strange, but it goes away. So I don't know why it does that. If you hit the pencil, it's fine. For some strange reason, recently, if I double click this, it turns all back to one color. S slightly odd. No biggie. Hit the pencil. And then we'll do this. That that's splitting the word instead of just trying to retype it. Certain programs, word processors, all of the above. A lot of times when you put the cursor right in front, if you don't necessarily notice a cursor size change, which this is really hard to tell. Um, you see in this place, it still says regular in the font, right? Let me just show you what I mean. See how it still says regular there. But when I go here, it says bold. So rather than just assuming that it was going to work, I'll often move inside of one letter, type whatever I'm going to type, and then delete around it. It's just a, it's a weird little quirk, something I've been doing all the way back since Quark Express days, um, you know, because you don't always see how it's fitting to be. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so just so you know, people are like, why, why did you do that? You could have just, you know, highlighted it and typed Duncan. Don't always work. Okay. And he ain't no community manager, though. He is moderator. Boom. All right. So we're going to hit that. What do you mean overlay not found? Ain't that crazy? Huh. That was weird. That was weird. Okay. <laughs> Never seen that happen before. Anyway, just so I don't have to go through those changes, I'm going to just size them evenly. And then put this over here. Oh, wait. I should embiggen them together first so they get the same amount of embiggen. All right. There we go. There we go. All right. So there it is. If you're going to do something cool like that. <laughs> Let's pop Paul in over here. So that's how you do it. You really, you set yourself up a whole scene. You for set up um, your guest scene. And then there's it. Now, normally what I like to do from here is I like to go ahead and add another guest scene that is a duplicate of this, where it's like a whole, a whole type situation. This is totally up to you. This is what I do. I'll show you a trick. I'm just going to hold down the option key and drag another one down. And then I can do guest, right? And in this particular case, I'm going to go to here, highlight this thing that says Paul Duncan, command C to copy it. Come back down to this thing and then command V to paste it and then place it in the middle somewhere like such, and then I like to use the camera switcher to swap, oi, bum clot. I like to use the camera switcher to swap cameras, but it's not working. Maybe when you have an overlay on top of it, you can't do that. I never thought about that. I always wondered. Let's try to move that out the way. Oh, I know why, because it's locked. Ha, huh? there you go. So 
that's how you swap it. All right. It just had to do with the situation being locked. Uh, so let me find out where that is. Now, I want you to look in here real quick. This is the most, not important, but probably something you should do. All right. So if I come over here, you see all these extra things that I was adding that I don't really need. We want to get rid of those, right? So you can highlight those, press the backspace key, put rich back on top so your comment goes where, take the screenshot, move it out of there. This particular one I don't need here, take it out of there. Clean these up. If you clean these up, it makes it easier. If you run into a panic attack midstream, you won't find yourself trying to find what that is. So when you go into your, your overlay section, if there's any items in here that you don't need, just highlight them. Backspace, out of there, clean them up, make them nice and easy. Now, one last thing to show you while we in this windowed situation. I'm going to back out just a smidgen. I'm gonna press this folder, Pio! and I'm gonna say host. All right, and then I'm gonna hit the folder again, and then I'm gonna say guess. All right, now a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually name these, you know what I mean? Um, so for instance, in this particular case, hit you with one of those, you know what I'm saying? Let's make it, let's make it extra cute. Um, there, Paul Duncan. <laughs> He's stupid. Oh yes. Anyway, so pick this up, drop that in, pick this camera up, drop that in, hit the link. Boom. Take the text, drop it in, camera, drop it in, hit the link, boom. So now when I dip, you dip, you dip, you dip. When I dip now, these are connected. <laughs> oh, Rich is on the road today. Rich is on the road today. Um, what's funny is, uh, Rich, I would message you the same video I sent to Paul. I know Paul's laughing right now because that, that video was hilarious. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so let's see. These, these, these. All right, we're good. We're good. Now, let me show you something real quick. I picked up during a office hours global type situation. Let me name this scene. Host plus guest. All right, now we're square. Um, I'm going to show you guys something that I picked up during a office hours global type situation that I think is amazing. This is a little face framer and that's, it's good. Like that's what it's supposed to be when you're setting yourself up and my head is a little bit weird for that shape, but this is generally where you want to be. If you're in this general process, your gold, um, uh, is made by a guy named Chris Fenwick, the Fenwick framer. I, unfortunately, I have not got permission from him to freely distribute 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 this, but what you could probably do, I'm not saying if I was me, I would, you know, watch this video and come over here and do something like this here and then make a screen shoot of it and then open it up in your favorite Canva program. And you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you need more instructions than that, I can't help you. <laughs> anyway, so this framer thing is very helpful to make sure you got your frames in order, right? And yeah, it kind of can scale. So if I were gonna take the framer and drop it on this particular program and come here, it's still pretty good, but you could also just, now that we're in here, you could scale the framer to fit the frame right? Because this particular frame is slightly smaller. You know what I'm saying? And then, so now we're still in there like swimwear. You know what I mean? All right, cool. So that means even if you're doing an overlay that's like really, really tiny and you're only going to do something like this, um, let me off this one and then poop this one, right? drop it under let's say I was going to be about yo big that was going to be my frame for this particular scene I would take this same framer thing and then make it match the cake it's really hard to grab because of the uh, PNG but you know 
So I would still, yeah, see, I mean, it's still working. You know what I mean? So you know your general frame is all right. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Just so you know, just so you know, just so you know. Mm. I need I need to add a backspace key to the stream deck. Makes it, like, way Eevee. All right, so we everybody is golden over here. Let's go ahead and do our next one. We're going to hit that, make a new, la, 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 new scene. There it is. All right, there's nothing there. <laughs> See, that's just because it's large, Roy. So I'm going to take this frame, this one right here, and I, I just highlighted it in the overlay section, right? I just highlighted it in the overlay section. While it's high lit, right, I am going to um, press command copy, go to this new scene, hit command paste, all right? I'm going to 86 the text situation and make this just a little bit smaller. I wish it was a little bit smaller, right? Hold down the option key, drag straight down, and I'm gonna leave space for my guest. Boom. Now I'm gonna hit screen severe, a screen share, and bigging this bad boy to size. Hit on the pencil, boom. Now I'm gonna select my thing, which I wanna show you. Okay, so in this particular situation, primary display, secondary display, tertiary display, so forth, so on, etc. Scrolling down, look for the application that you want to show. In this particular case, let's just use Chrome. A, all right, now we're in there. So um, you can align these up so you can, you know, 86 the bottom. And then if I change this to a 16 by nine screen, boom, now it's in there. It basically fits, it's slightly hanging off. So that's why I was a little crooked because I had it crisscross between monitors and you're good to go. So there's your screen share. Now let's, um, you know, it can be any application you want. You open whatever app you want and you can share that. Just be, understanding that if you happen to see the most beautiful girl in the world, sorry, <laughs> if you happen to have a machine with not a lot of bass, you might need to use a second machine if you want to show off something powerful like this Logic Pro. I'm operating on the Mac Studio, so, you know, good to go, right? But if I was to go ahead and hit that, of course, this takes over the whole shooting match. So what I'm going to do, ah, not full screen. What I'm going to do is unembiggen this just a little, right? And then move it to my second screen and then pull it down until I'm right about in the 16 by nine ish frame. And then now we're good to go. The minute you see it dancing on the side, you know, you hit that 16 by nine aspect ratio. All right. So like, yeah, if I wanted to show Logic or Final Cut or whatever, completely possible, but just know that if your machine ain't got the good gravy, you might not want to do that. You know what I'm saying? You might want to use a secondary machine. So we're going, going to go a little left today. Um, let me do something. The old MacBook. Right? No wires. Open it up. Fingerprint. And hide secret squirrel information. That you, none of your damn business. All right. Let me close this. We don't need to see that. We're going to do something. We're going to do something real bad. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's come over here. Open up Panic at the Discord. Switch this on over here. And then on this secondary computer, I am going to launch Ecamm. ECA, two M's. That's this program. 
as soon as it launches, I am going to turn on NDI, which is already on, and make sure that interview is off so we don't have any crashes because that does cause us an issue. All right. And then, man, that camera is dirty. What the hang? So, you know, I just realized where you open the computer is right where the camera is. So you get like smudges all up in your thing. Anyway, so look, if I come down here to my camera switcher and I take, say, uh, add a new, I'm going to add a new placeholder. And then if I select on here, you'll see it says Dark Nelius Local Domain, Ecamm Live. Boom. This is my camera from my MacBook. Can you see? Woo, woo, woo. Right? If I were to pick this bad boy up, put it here, look. Okay? So <clears throat> what that would mean, I think we were talking about this last week, Roy, is on this particular Mac, let me hit live demo mode here so you can see. Turn on live demo mode. All right, so let me take this. Ooh, you know what? Let's delete that. Let's not do that. Let's pick on this new scene here. Oh, you know you make me want to turn my hands up and come on now. Come on now and say you will. All right, so here we go. So now I'm in live demo mode. You're basically seeing the scene of my secondary Mac, okay? So what I am fitting to do is on this particular one, I'm going to go into screen share mode, current application, change it to the old Discord. Discord wants me to switch. I don't want you to switch nothing. And there it is. There is the whole Ecamm Live demo, uh, Ecamm Live Discord, right? So... Now what I can do on this particular thing back in Ecamm is turn off live demo mode and I can show you how to use Discord basically from the second computer. You know what I'm saying? So if you're doing a situation where you have to show something that's a little bit powerful, you can always use a second machine. We have built in. NDI, you don't need to know what those letters stand for. You just need to know that it will allow you to share one instance of Ecamm to the other as a camera. You know what I mean? So there's that. We were talking about this last week. So another situation I could do here is let's say I open Keynote up on this girl. Keynote. 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 Note, note, note. All right, let me put this back. Back, 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 back. I'm going to change this screen share to Keynote and then say play in a window and then press play. And there is my Keynote live and direct from the other, other MacBook. You know what I'm saying? Look is right here. So I can change a, the sleeves from way back here. Ooh, I feel good. Had a na 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 na. Boom, this is the sign you're looking for. Dang funny. All right, people, so there you go. Just so you know, one of the most powerful features of Ecamm that people do not use enough uh, and be trying to figure out how they're supposed to do that. This is not an update. This has been in the program since I first downloaded the program 2020. Back in April 2020, you could do that. Been around for a hot minute. Not a new feature. Is people do not learn how to use the software that they got, and then... Even if the person who's done this demo over a hundred times have showed that trick at least 20 times, they still don't know. Don't take it personal. Baby, 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 don't take it personal. (sighs) 
if they only retained all the things that I've taught them in 132 demos. No. Nah. Just delete it. Like, why would you just remove one? Just delete them all. All of those videos still exist on your computer, right? Like, what difference does it make? I don't, I don't, I mean, I understand the logic behind it, but I don't. Help me. Help me, Rhonda. Help me, Rhonda. Get her out of my heart. Like, what's the problem with just doing one of these? Out of there! Because they're your videos. It's your computer. In theory, you know where they are. If not, if you know the name of them, you can search them again and just put them back. Like, yeah. So, yeah. I get it, but I don't. Help me out. Um, all right. So, let's go. People, 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 people. What was next on my agenda? Oh, yeah, I know what. So we did that. We showed you this. We showed you that. Look, if you're going to do this from a single computer, I should show you this as well, just in case. Just in case Simple Simon went to the apartment when he's going to the fair. If you're doing Keynote on the same computer, uh, man, stop trying to call Kayla. Hit this Keynote action over here. Same exact process on Ecamm if you're doing it on a single computer. Uh, open up your presentation, Boyaka, and then... Make sure you go in Keynote and say play in the window. That's key. So that way when you do this, you have this window here, and then <laughs> it's, not, it's not even a logic situation. It's like why are we trying to make things difficult for ourselves for no apparent reason? <laughs> that, that's Start with why. That's a very good book. Let's just start with why. Why are you being goofy right now? Oh, I know why, because I didn't select Keynote. See, I'm messing myself up listening to Dan. Don't listen to Dan and mess you up. <laughs> okay, so there it is. There it is. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, one of those things. One of those things. You know, the, the hardest part about software, even from a user perspective, is will this really make it simpler? Are we adding another feature that adds a complication that could possibly break something else that also can add to confusion for folks in the, especially in the convenience mode. That was always a big crazy problem with, with us at Apple, right? I want to add a feature for convenience, but am I overcomplicating something that simple? That's also why there's so many undocumented things in software because they pass the muster at once, but rather than unprogram it out, they just left it there realizing that the people that are savvy will find it. The other people, it won't add any confusion to the process. So like you'll often find in these videos about um, like, secret hidden iPhone tips or whatever. That's because it was there. It just didn't pass the muster. Somebody said, leave it because taking it out might break something else and you just left it. So that's, that's how these things exist. Paul is here. Paul says, we just tried using the comment placeholders, but the comment didn't show with their position on screen. Any ideas? What could Paul call it? What could pause that? <laughs> what could pause that? So for example, we have one scene, with them in one position and another scene, we had them in a different position. Um, I, how did you create the comment placeholder? Because you need a comment in order to create the placeholder. I'm curious. But yeah, if I hit this, it lands sort of where I want it. So I guess what Paul is stating, if I come over here and I hit this, and then I put it here, right? When I go here, it's going to go right back up there. You know what I mean? But it is landing in the same position. You know, it's just OB there. Now, let's pick something really short. Uh, 
something really short. Paul. You see? So yeah, it's still landing in there. It's landing in the spot. I got just one question. Why in the insert your favorite bad word here, would you have guest audio come from Zoom when you have Ecamm as a guest interface? We use overlay, add, comment, placeholder, overlay. Okay. Mm. All right, let's do something to it. Let's do what Paul said. We're going to make a new one. What? We're going to add a camera. What? We're going to pop it right y'all. Man, I, we need a keystroke for landing in the center because I swear I struggle. Anyway, let me hit that and let's go uh, add a placeholder, overlay, comment, booyaka, move this down here. And matter of fact, we're going to sticky wig it off to one side. And then we're going to press that. We're going to recapitulate these things. So I'm going to hit that and let's go with a little bit of light blue. Boom. And then let's do regular. And then we're going to take this, hit it with a slightly different blue. Boom. And then we're going to take this and hit it with white. Boom, and we're going to call that a day, all right? So that's my placeholder. I came in here, I adjusted some things, and did actually, as a matter of fact, let's change the back grizzle and skip my little RGB slider action and get it a little bit more burps, and then let me tone it. Oh, yeah, yes, I'm, am I tweaking? Absolutely, freaking lutely <laughs> okay? Don't at me, bro. All right, cool. So now we got that. We're going to save it. So bam, if I hit this, there is my placeholder. So now if I say, boom, they, they work. I'm, I'm not sure. Paul, it's working as I did it. All you people with funny names is making it hard. Paul Dixon. See, it kind of worked, but the Dixon didn't Dixon. I mean, I like that. Let me come back. Let me try this again. All right, so now I put the Dixon. And then let me see. Someone with a normal person's name. Nope. Doesn't work. Where's Paul Duncan? Nope, he has this Mr. Moderator stuff. Nobody here. There's Rich Graham. Nope, it broke it. Anyway, yeah. That's but I mean I guess it works, Paul. Mm. Yeah. Let's do some this is what we do this for, Paul, is to do some trying. See, I never did it the way you did it. <laughs> I know you don't know how you did it, but Dunk Duncan did it. I always just go this is really crazy. And <laughs> Paul is smarter than me on this particular situation. I always test actually live. So when I build, I build oftentimes actually live because I know what's going to happen when you are actually live. So I build to myself in a nobody knows where this channel is YouTube channel. So when I build, I build live because then I know how it's going to react when it's live. I don't use the placeholder situations, but actually kind of good. <laughs> no, I just meant first name, last name. Yours might have worked. Like, David's will work because it was first name, last name. And, yeah, normally it accepts my weird. Um, but maybe because we use that placeholder thing. Let me delete that. And let's put David here by himself. See, now Dixon got me rabbit holing. <laughs> Damn it, Dixon. All right, now let me see what happens. And then let's take the David part and make it yeller and then go like that. All right, so now, because Paul Dixon is two names. Nope, it, it doesn't work. 
Okay, I, I swear it worked that way before. I might be tripping. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It totally makes totally makes fun. But I don't think it does that, Paul. I don't think you could have two different places. And if that's the case, as a matter of fact, I know it doesn't do that because that totally makes sense, right? Because on this particular scene, I completely want it to be right here, right? But then on a different scene where I have it like such, I'm going to want it up here. And yeah, that is time for a feature request. And I don't know if it's possible because it, it does. I mean, it's a matter of API calls and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't know if it's possible, but yeah, I would like that too. Now that I think about it, I just don't think about it because I'm not trying to make up my own shit, Paul. <laughs> Sorry, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. That's actually a good request. I like that one. Boom. Because I have definitely, I think I've tried it before and just realized it didn't work and I, I just, you know, went to, to the other direction. But it does make sense because you think about it, when we're in a situation and we're always moving it live, right? We're always live. We're doing a thing. Like we go back to this here where we have, you know, the guest and I, we have it coming up here on the bottom, right? See, I just did it wrong. Now you got to move it, Right. And then when you go to a different scene, it's kind of in the way. So you end up moving it. And I'm always, you know, messing around and moving it live. But you're right. If I can build it, know that it's going to land there, and I can build around that, that is dope. Like, that is actually dope. If we get that one, we're going to call it the Dixon Effect. Boom. All right. Let's keep moving. Woo. That's pretty genius. Um. You know what I didn't do? I didn't download the the Dixon Effect animated emojis. Those things are cool. Uh, let's see. I want to show you guys about this camera thing, okay? So the, to me, this is one of the coolest portions of the new update is this camera switcher. So looking down here at the bottom, you see it got my Apollo 13. That's my other phone, my iPhone 13. Got my Cam Link, Cam Link 4K, Camo Camera, Instant 360, right? All of these are, are dope. But as you plug and unplug things, they don't often come back in the right position. So, for instance, I got an interface right here. I'm going to plug it in. Boom. Looking at the box, looking at the Gucci, boom. Game Capture HD60X just popped up. Nope. Do you want to use the audio device? Oh, no, that's Logic. Sorry. Don't use that. Let me quit Logic before I create a kerfuffle. I thought Ecamm said that. And I was like, wait, we don't even have dialog boxes like that. Let me quit Logic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you see this, the game capture HD60X, right? So now we got Camlink, Camlink 4K. Uh, Apollo 13, which is my iPhone 13, my camo camera, uh, Insta360 link, and then the guess one. This is all fine and dandy. However, if I made this scene run this Apollo guy, and then I made another scene, which is basically the same camera running that Apollo guy, and then running this Insta360 link guy, and then running my Camlink 4K guy, like these guys are all in here. When I do something crazy, like go back to this, take this, and it's gone, right? All my scenes are broken. When I come here, it's broken. However, however, if I go to the AB switcher, follow me now, follow me now. I'm going to plug this back in temporarily, right? Then I'm going to take camera H. Actually, I'll use E because, no, it's H because it's the HD60X. Click on this and call it the Game Capture HD60X. Now, whenever I'm in the scene, I want this camera to be camera H, right? I want this to be camera H. So now, if ever this is gone, right, all I have to do on camera H is say, I want you, instead of looking for 
the HD capture, I want you to look for the Hinstant 360 link. And it's fixed in all the places. You know what I'm saying? So whenever you swap cameras, then yeah. Um, anybody seen Gangster Grandma? No, she's not here today. I don't know, Sandy. I haven't touched one of those round bowels since Jesus walked in Nazareth. <laughs> so I can do a quick look. If we go to here and switch this bad boy to that, let's go like this. Uh, click this and I'm just being lazy. This has nothing to do with you guys. <laughs> All right. Let's go here. Yes, it does have HDMI. The question is, is it clean? So it does have HDMI, but I, let's see if it's clean. It looks like it has graphics on there. Yeah, it might not be clean. So then what that means is no, no lines and crap. There we go. Canon EOS Rebel clean HDMI output. And it may not have. Okay, there you go. The answer is no. Simple. Simple. The, the OG version does not have clean HDMI. The new version with the I. Dang it, stop moving. I told you to stop moving. Anyway, the, the, the OG version does not have clean HDMI out. The new version has. And so... Um, Clean HDMI just means no weird crap on the screen, right? It just comes up naked. So there you go. There's the answer to your question. It's some da, 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 da. Uh, yes, Ecamm does not care anything about your cameras. We don't care. If, if it shows up in your Mac, you're good. If it doesn't show up in your Mac, you're not good. We don't do anything special for cameras. We don't have to. We use the native capture facilities. So I know couple few people that have Osbot tinies. Now, tiny ones. Um, one of my students actually has a, a couple of tiny ones. So yes, they, I know they work. And there's that. Yeah, that's funny, Sandy. You, you need the K though. <laughs> Got it at the K. No, I did not. I did not. It came from Chris Fenwick. All right, cool. So let's get back in here. La. See? Told you. Told you. Let's take this guy here and click on the button. Change it to a squircle. I just like squircles, people. And again, for me, I think it's super important that get in the habit of cleaning up your overlay areas because they will make you go a little bit goofball when you're trying to find stuff and you can't find it. Like right now, I'm about to do something dumb. I'm going to Ecamm Live Beta and I'm trying to find the sound levels and it doesn't work. So we'll just start with comments and reactions. All right, let me show you this. La, 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 la. We're going to bring this in here. We're going to grab this. We're going to tuck it in just a smidge. All right, so why is Paul so... So hardcore about the Q questions. So when I type in Q question in here, I can find the questions. Super simple, right? Also, you can come in and you can star comments too. So I can hit the star, hit the star, and then hit the star, right? So I go over here and of course, got to, you know, display Sandy's comment again because, you know, that was nice. Then we go like here. We'll put Victor comment up next because he's holding a coffee cup, which you guys don't know is inside that coffee cup is actually beer. Um, 
<laughs> to George's dog, right? And once you're done with those, you can make them go bye bye, right? But in here, all your comments are, you know, easily seen. So, but when you're moving really, really quickly, like during the Q and A, super hard to find your questions if you don't throw the Q calling in, right? And and also in YouTube, you can answer back. Boom, like such, right? Super easy stuff. It's really cool. I just like having it. You'll also see there is a little 14 thing right there. That's how many people liked the video while, you know, the thing is playing. So it's animated. Well, I have the setting set to be animated. So when someone hits the like button, then you'll see the little thumbs go. And they just fly up. That's just there. Um, just to sort of make it easier for you to notice so if something comes up like there's a little thumb that flies so that's the comments in reactions window in a nutty shell uh let's do this real quick just a quick another look see uh camera switcher again all of these things are in here i really love this feature this is probably my favorite thing that happened in the last update is using the a b side i never use this side ever i haven't looked at this except for to do the demo come here i like the fact that you can just add a new placeholder camera you can also add a network camera if you happen to have one of those like victor and so i just like you know how you can come in here and do this now let's show you a couple tricks i can take this you notice that camera a camera c camera e are identical but are they really though if I press this to bring up the uh, Harry Potter box, I can go in here on the zoom and pan, zoom this bad boy in, pan it all the way to one side, and now that has a whole different look. It's the same camera, but it's a different look, right? I can take this one on the old camera E, go to the Harry Potter box, and put it in black and white, right? So it's the same camera, but all different looks off of the same camera. So gangster. I love that feature. So you can do that as well. Um, you can also do things like get rotational with it. <laughs> right? So you can get the witness protection program. Right? You have that. I don't know why, but we have sepia tone. <clears throat> Somebody requested it. I, I'm curious. <laughs> like... Are you doing the old Western show? But no, nah, I guess it's it's a common camera doohickey. So there is that. Let's go on to the next. Oh, this is scalable. I'm going to hate myself for breaking my scale, but you can make them bigger if you are visually old. There. Okay. Okay. Mm, didn't want to break my scale. I like when it get. you know, I, I wish we had a, a way to save. Like I got all my layouts, how I like it. All my panels like it. Preferences like it. I wish there was a way to save it. Profile does some of that. I don't know if profile keeps my, my um, camera switcher settings like, like something of that nature. So. I, I just like, once I get things how I like it, I like to leave it alone. And I always have to muck about because of this. Oh, speaking of mucking about, Paul Duncan. <laughs> no, uh, Paul and I were talking yesterday, and we actually had a, um, a conversation because Paul was mucking about with the old roadcaster, and something went sideways. I just want to remind everybody who has one of these, and I bet you not even roadcasters, some other interfaces have these too. You see this little icon right here? This is my studio setup for the Rodecaster Pro. So you can come over here, and I don't want to touch any of that. Um, and here, if I go to device configurations, go to system, I think there is, nope. You can't do it inside the software. I thought you could. Maybe you can't. Uh, you can save your settings, your show, so that you can load different shows, right? So if you know you want to try something or, or mess, mess about and you want to make sure you don't muck everything up, 
you can save your settings, but I think you just only do it on the device. I thought you could do it here, but you cannot. But anyway, um, make sure you remember to do that because that way you don't lose everything and then it just becomes all messed up and you can't sort of get back to where you are. So, boom. Make sure you save that. Make sure you save that. Um, Lester, during the live Q&A, you had a question and we were going back and forth. Did you get it sussed out? I am curious. Why why are you muted? Why are you muted? I'm not muted. This is working. Anyway, let's go here. I didn't play any videos, so we're good. Okay, Lester got it figured out. That's what we want to know. I want to know what you're feeling. What do you mean, not yet? <laughs> you just, wait, I'm confusing you. Uh, I'm planning to get the roadcaster duo just to play with the roadcaster it's it's er victor <laughs> i see what you did there the or and the tor get it no it's er day <laughs> anyway just messing with you um so lester reposit your question if for some reason yeah i want to interview someone with the observers who are not seen by the interviewee I, I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. You want, okay, so let's see this. Let's see this. If we're here, boom, you want this person and this person to be doing an interview, but you want these people not to show up because this guest has no way of knowing that anybody is watching if you hide that. Well, they're not seeing that anyway, because when you come out of when you come out of live, um, if you're not in live demo mode, of course. Why are you press the same button twice, Doc? You dummy. Uh, yeah, I know what focus groups are, and I understand the blind observers. But if you go live to a private page, and they're the only ones with the link, the person being interviewed has no clue anybody else is watching. They just don't like. There's there's nothing. Only way they would know is because you didn't set your preferences right. So when you go to interview, you you um, you say guest view is going to be host camera. So that's all they see, right? And then in the interview setup, you're going to turn off viewer comments and viewer count. You're going to turn off private chat, and nobody would know whatsoever like nobody would know period point blank end of story <laughs> like i think that's all you got to do uh you could always do a dummy tech with us uh so you can invite one of us and send a bunch of us to a private page and yeah i i, I really don't think they know or we could flip it i can send you a link and then have a whole bunch of people watching you and you'll never know I think that's all you got to do. I legit do. Uh, anybody think of anything that I'm missing? Holla at your boy. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, let me put this back on broadcast. I never do host camera. I just don't. Da, 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 da. All right, cool. And yeah, you, always keep, you would keep this comments and reaction windows shut or you put it somewhere else. Um, good question. Okay. May I ask teleprompter set up question on Ecamm live streaming with nice display to guest face and notes at the same time. Uh, yeah, super simple. Super simple. This is going to require my Apollo 13. I'm just thinking how to do this real quick. So let me go to this one. And then I'm going to 
go to my Apollo 13. I'm going to turn it on. Turn it on, Apollo 13. All right. Wake up. Wake me up before you go, go. All right. I'm going to take this and do tall. And then. <laughs> you ding dong. <laughs> that did, oh, I know why. This is screen share. You idiot. Okay. All right. So there's a teleprompter. Right now, there's nothing on it. Right? So let's 86 this. Let's do this so you can see. There's nothing on the teleprompter. This is my guest camera. Guest number F. Okay? I'm going to press on these three dots. Video source, teleprompter. There's my guess. Right there. Right? So, that's one way. Um, the second way would be... Source video monitor off. Second way would be create... <clears throat> so, this is going to be... Here, let me do this again. I'm going to copy this. Actually... Yeah, it's going to be difficult, but we'll figure it out. I'm going to go to this particular scene here. All right, so there's me and the guest. Again, there's nothing on the teleprompter, right? I'm going to just place this in the middle so you can see nothing on the teleprompter. However, what I'm going to do is press preview mode, right? And this is what's live to the general public. I'm going to take my other window here, output, and output. There we go. To the video monitor. So now all of this is over there. But this is really what the audience would be seeing if I'm in preview mode, right? So I can see my guests. Because my guest's head is over there, right? There's the guest. And I could take a window that also had a bunch of notes on it. And I could pick this up and move it over there. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. That's how you do it. That being said, what I would really do, because this is just extra complicated for no reason, because now you can't use preview mode. Revert these changes. What I would really do is put my guests on that screen and put my notes on the iPhone <laughs> and call it a day. Right? Because, it I, like, you're generating... The teleprompter is a monitor, and yeah, we don't have an extra output like that. So, in theory, it'd be better for you to use an iPad or an iPhone to put your notes on, or actually a notepad and a three by five card like this, and just pin it to the bottom of your situation. You know what I mean? Like, legit, just take this and tape it to the bottom of your situation. You got your notes right there and the person right there. I think the analog solution is the best solution. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, I would definitely stick to the analog solution, bro. Just tape <laughs> just tape your, your notes to the bottom. It's a way better, simpler, easier looks. Uh, El Jefe. It is a Oh, good question. I forget. I know what it is, but I forget what the name of it is. All the time. Um, all my diamonds ain't really diamonds. That's It's a T3. It's not a TS3. It's just T3. There, there it is. 
Desview T3. You kind of want the newer version. The newer version has a bracket to hold a real deal camera. When I got mine, it didn't have such a thing. But it says I purchased this way back then. Way back then. I'm sure it is on my kit page as well. But just in case. I do not use a teleprompter to read notes. I just use it so I can see people's faces. I, I don't know how people will be like, hi, I'm Velvet Jones. Today I will be teaching you how to use your supercalifragilistic intergalactic planetary. With one of these and our brand new model, you can be on your way to having success full business. Like, I, I really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, Kevin! <laughs> if you look at your person like this for the whole entire stream, it is super creepy. But if, while they're talking, you go like this, and you go, you know, let's move on to our next point. It says here in my notes, blah, 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 blah. if you watch the greatest, Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Kimmel, Chuck Rose, they got D's on the desk. Even on ESPN, Neil Everett, Hawaii's finest. Look at the paper and goes, this week, Alabama has fired their crappy coach. They will never win another SEC tournament. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what they do. So why do all the live streamers try to be better than Oprah? I don't know. I don't know. If the great people look at their notes, look at your boombaclad notes, man. Yes, there you go, there you go. I I definitely think I agree with this. I agree with this. Um, what this person is. Yes, dude, Lester. The fact that you know what the Velvet Jones is, you just get extra cool points for me. <laughs> I, I love saying that live. Yes, yes. What's happening, E Buggy? Good to see you. All right, so. We covered that. Let's check in the next one. I want to make sure we get all these things in there before we forget. Uh, we need to do sound levels real quick. La, 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 la. Sound levels. There it is. You can hold down the option key to crop, drop, set them down, open up shop. First we're like, whoa. Now we're like, whoa. Who got your back to Rough Riders roll? All right, so there you go. Boom, 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 boom. This is my sound level situation. Um, go like that. Select your sound device. You got movie sound. You got sound effects sound. System audio. I don't use this because I have an interface. When I had it on, it was causing all kinds of issues because you're making things feedback in that don't need to feedback in. So personally, I don't use it. But if your interface doesn't have built-in loop back, you, you might find yourself needing it. So that's why mine is off, in case you were wondering. And then there's my interview sound. You notice I keep everything at 80, and I talk right here just so I'm just kissing a bubble if I go yellow. I do not want it to go red. So this is how you do it. This is how you do red. I'm using interview mode in the lobby to bring in guests via camera the only way to bring in guests is via camera uh, however their feeds are being treated as video only is there to is there a way to prevent the guests from hearing the host audio wait that question not formulated in a manner that this brain understands i am so confused this is going to require a little bit more explanation in theory they don't even have to know that you're there when we do the flow i call Luis. katie calls Luis. 
Katie and I are on screen. Luis can hear everything, controlling everything. Luis never really has to say anything to us, but he does because he's a smart ass. But in theory, he don't have to say anything. I'm joking, Luis. Um, yeah, so just have a remote producer, and I think that's what you're trying to do. I I don't know. You guys be coming up with stuff that I have no idea what you're doing, so you got to explain it in a matter that makes sense, and then or say what you're your final is. So I was mentioning it before in the beginning of this. If you start with your why, sometimes it's easier. So why are you trying to interview mode? Yeah. Why are you leaving them in the lobby? In, I think you mean green room, right? I think you're saying you use interview mode and you bring guests in the green room via can I don't understand any of that. <laughs> I'm I'm confused. Somebody help me decipher that. Cause the only way to bring in guests is via the green room. They all live in here. Right? Why am I dumb? This is your interview. When someone calls your show, they're in the green room. There's no other place for them. And the only way to bring them in is through the green room. There's no other way to do it. And then once they're in, there's no way for them to be video only unless they're muted. Okay. Now, let's just, in, suppo in supposition, let's say that your question is difficult because it's Esau. Posit your question in your native language because I can figure it out. We got chat GPT. How about that? <laughs> Just in case. Because maybe that's why this is a, a, a impossible to understand question. Audio routing is super simple, but most people complicated in the way that they think. And that, that messes it up, right? In theory, most of it is easy, but it has to be, you got to think of it all the way through. Are you trying to do what you do, do it, the Discord watch party? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question as well. Yeah, so Technicom Media, please, by all means, reposit your question. And even if it's English is not your favorite thing, Let's um, pick something else. I'm going to look at the channel to see if I can see what that means. Because I got nothing. A famous guy once said. Oh, my diamonds are really diamonds. I don't know why that song is stuck in my head. It is obnoxious. Not enough info on the channel. All these videos are old, so they're not helpful. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, get in touch. Let us know. We'll figure it out. We, I mean, people do some incredible things with ECAM, and we're always like, whoa, how they did that. So there you go. Anyway, let's do one more real quick. Pop that. No, this one. Just want to show you sound special effects. Special effects. All right, here's our sound effects box. As you can see, all your stuff is in there. When you play, uh, this box has been cropped so you can't see the bottom. When you play something, it puts on a timer at the bottom so you can see how long it is. You have individual audio controls over each one so you can make them louder. So, for instance, this is the loud one. DJ Doc Rock. DJ Doc Rock. And this is the quiet one. DJ Doc Rock. DJ because Doc Rock. the volume was there. You know what I'm saying? So you can adjust that, put your music in there.
rock and roll legend, number 364, The Head Bob. Anybody seen the Blue Man Group in real life? They are freaking amazing. I love it. I don't have to go watch it again. I was just in Vegas. I didn't have time to go see it. But Blue Man Group in real life is the absolute sauce. It is so good. It is so good. <laughs> uh, you would have fun, Eden. If you if you see me do my set, you'd have fun. Wait, hold on. Really, though? They're trying to get rid of AM radio? Come on, Rich. You got to be joking me. Let me investigate. Rich, sometimes Rich be pulling my leg. So I got to check. That would be crazy. What? Yo, Rich is telling the truth. I'm going to have to investigate. I think that's crazy. I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. Um, Yeah, I'm going to look into that. But, yeah, I. it, it just seems weird because it's just one of those things that we've always had. All right, so we're going to try this again. Interview mode is being used in a large room to bring in camera fees in my production. But how, how can you interview somebody if they can't hear you? I, I This is where we're getting confused. Like, and what does the size of the room have to do with it? I'm just trying to understand the question because that's where I'm getting confused. Like, I'm just going to assume this is for something to do with church. So let's start there. Are you trying to have the guests be seen on like big screen TVs in the church? And they're just going to be like a remote pastor. And then the host never has to talk to the guests. The, the host never has to say a single word. Right. So like Paul, you could Paul could call me. I could be like this, right? And I can't talk to you guys if I do this. If I mute this particular my interface, when I mute it, you won't hear me no more. So I'm not going to be able to explain to you, but I could just mute. Paul could call in. I could put Paul on the screen and Paul could be like, hi, this is Paul Duncan. And whatever he wanted to talk about, cats, uh, broken roadcaster pros, whatever. And I just don't say nothing. So, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. You have 118.5% control over the guest audio that's sent back to the guests, either through your interface or just mute the microphone. Right? If, unless you're confusing what Mix Minus is, because that's exactly what Mix Minus does. Yeah, I think that's it. Anyway, contact support. That would be the best answer. Right? That's what I'm saying. It sounds exactly like a remote production. Um, yeah, this is going to require a one-on-one -on -one session or contact support or, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. Because right, right now... It makes about as much sense as screen doors in the submarine. But hold on. If you contact support, they will book a one-on-one -on -one appointment, and I will help you figure it out. Anyway, we're going to close with that. It might be something that Ecamm can't do. We can't do everything. We can do a lot, but we can't do everything. We can't fly a plane. <laughs> yes uh, if you live anywhere near Hollywood Florida Luis will just come and do it for you 
Sorry, Luis. I was just putting you on blast. Ah, man, I am. I mean, Rich got me tripping, man. Cause like I, I love like the AM sports radio. Like it's something you can just put on while you drive. You know, it's good. <laughs> Eden trying to get all of us drowned. <laughs> Next week, gang. I we got the flow, of course. Uh, we got the final cut class, and then I'm gonna be on Eden's podcast, and uh, yeah, so to be going to be exciting. We got excited stuff. Uh oh, Luis, <laughs> you're gonna have a visitor. You're close. <laughs> you're close enough. Actually, is Fort Lauderdale that man? It's been a while since I've been in Florida. I forget how far things are. I know that Jacksonville was close to where I was stationed in Georgia, so it's easy. Yeah, clear channel at night. Yeah, it's crazy. Man, this is good. Thank you guys. Today's demo was fun. You guys had good questions. I hope everybody gets this figured this stuff out. And uh, Technicom Media, definitely reach out so that we can figure out what it is you're trying to do in cases possible. Uh, now, Glenn, the guy, teach the grandbabies the weird stuff that I say. <laughs> so, yeah. You yeah, see, you guys you guys are close to each other. Um, either hit me up for the one on one or hit up Luis and we'll get we'll get you figured out. We'll get you squared away. And, and Luis might have to drive over. He likes that that cafe Bustello coffee. It's not it's not that good. Um <laughs> and he likes ham and manchego. If you can if you can provide those two things, you'll get excellent customer service from Luis. <laughs> All right, family, I will see you guys on the flip. I appreciate y'all. You guys keep rocking. And then, yes, I finally got some of the okay to show you the good good. So I will be working on this for you so that as soon as they say go, it's on like Donkey Kong. Peace out. <laughs>